Here is the 2024 Ford Ranger XLT in carbonized gray metallic over gray interior. This is a full refresh with clearance up to 10.7 inches when you go into the new Raptor, which has 90 horsepower more than the standard twin turbo EcoBoost. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and we're gonna touch bases on some pros and cons. The problem that I have with the all new design of the Ranger and comparable rivals. In the front is going to have LED headlights, fog lights and daytime runnings will not be LED, but over nine inches of clearance, which is going to be better than the base model of the new Tacoma. And I like how the grill is integrated. It goes into the new C structure headlight assembly. You get the satin aluminum that's gonna go on the lower. Because we have the sports appearance package, the front grill will get the carbonized gray inserts with the satin aluminum on the lower. And unlike the Tacoma, we don't have any eyesores down here. So it looks a little bit more rugged. Bumping it up to the XLT gets two different engine configuration. This is the standard 2.3 liter inline four cylinder EcoBoost with 270 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque. Both engines will be optioned with a 10 speed automatic transmission. Or you can option the 2.7 liter V6 twin turbo that has 315 horsepower with 400 pound-feet of torque. So you're talking 45 horsepower more than the base engine option, 90 pound-feet of torque more. But the reason why you want to take the box for this is it unlocks 7,500 pounds of towing, which is just underneath the Colorado, but it beats the new Tacoma, the best payload of all of them, over 1,800 pounds when you option this engine. Going up to the Raptor, that's going to increase horsepower to 405 with 430 pound-feet of torque, but it's gonna drop the towing under 5,600 pounds, drop the payload to under 1,400 pounds. We have the Sports Appearance Package, which gets these 17-inch carbonized gray wheels, on the XLT, you can option the same wheel design as the Lariat, so you can go up to an 18-inch wheel. And the fenders will flare out just a touch with the carbonized gray XLT badging on the air vent. And when you're thinking full refresh, the whole suspension has been reworked with a short and long arm independent and tubular stabilizer bar for the front. It's gonna be non-independent live leaf springs and outboard shock absorbers for the rear. But when you step it up to the Raptor, it's gonna change it to a forged aluminum double A arm suspension with 2.5 inch Fox live valve shocks for the front. And the rear will get the Watts link rear suspension with trailing arm 2.5 inch Fox valve shocks. So it's gonna be off road oriented. Plus you have everything that you could do for your day in and day out use when you go into the regular Ranger. But you will have to tick the box for these side steps, which is a couple hundred bucks. It's gonna achieve 21 MPG for the city, 25 MPGs for the highway, and it comes standard as a four by two with options for a four by four. But when you tick the box for that, your towing and payload goes down. Front and rear parking sensors, we have a 360 degree reverse camera, fully boxed steel frame, 3.73 locking differential. The problem that I have with the new Ranger is it goes tier base. So if you want LED for everything, instead of just the headlight is simply, you gotta go to the Lariat, in which when you go into the XL, you're going to lose a lot of features. This is the sweet spot, but then you're gonna start going into a near 50 grand price point in which you can option an F-150 that has more capabilities than this. Soft to open for the tailgate with a total capacity of 43.5 cubic feet. The length at 59.6 inches between the wheel well housing at 48.2 inches. Maximum width inside is at 62.4 inches and a height at 34.7 inches. We have a 12 volt and a home plug with handles and clips. And the best feature for people that's on the job you now have a tape measure on your tailgate. Ten-way power seat adjustment for the driver, six-way power seat adjustment for the passenger, heated front seats, and the XL will have manual seat adjustments. Headroom and leg room. The refresh 
is a lot better with tech and storage. You're gonna start off in the passenger side between the dashboard. It's a flat dashboard layout. I like the pattern that comes into place with the large infotainment screen. This is an upgrade. We have navigation, which comes with the technology package. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. You have a towing app, dual climate control settings. You can click here and you still have physical buttons, which makes it a little bit easy as well to operate. Put it into reverse. We got a 360 degree reverse camera, full trajectory for the front and the rear. You can line up that tow line and you can also zoom in. And you have a lot of different camera positions to make it easy for your reversing. Wireless charger starts on this trim. You'll have a little storage area here, USB ports coming into more of a soft with the leatherette. Gonna have a storage, it's a little deep with a 12 volt charger. And the steering wheel is a leatherette on the XLT. If you want heated, you have to go up to the lariat. Multi-function, and the big upgrade from the XL to the XLT is Ford Co. Pilot 360 technology with blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, trailer coverage, lane keep assist with adaptive cruise control, stop and go. And we have an eight inch gauge cluster that can go through an array of information for the driver. When you go up to the Lariat, it's going to be a 12 inch digital reader. Auto dimming rear view mirror starts on this trim. Door panel and the dash can figure it together. And I like the gloss black that highlights the air vents because it has the Bronco style. Door is going to be soft where it needs to be. You get the pattern that comes in. One touch up and down for the front windows with a long storage pocket and a beverage holder carved out. The XLT also adds the power sliding rear window. Headroom and leg room. I like how it's carved out, so it actually gives you probably an additional two inches or so. You'll have storage behind the passenger seat with a storage tray. 12 volt is going to be standard. Home plug starts on this trim and up to the lariat. USB ports, cup holders with an armrest, and the door is gonna have the same materials that is found in the front with about two beverage holders carved out and a little storage nook right here. Sliding into the center, the floor is not flat. So you will, you will be sharing some feet space. Otherwise, you're gonna be setting up so high, it's gonna be uncomfortable. But it's not gonna be too bad because it is a little bit more wide in the interior. Leg space isn't too bad either. Knee, this is back a little bit more so than the driver's seat. I'm at six foot three. And the same thing with headroom, it's not gonna be an issue. And for optimal storage inside, you can fold these seats down and they stay relatively flat. You can also pull this lever here. You know, pull up the whole bench and you have two little compartments. 270 horsepower with 310 pound feet of torque. There is no increase in power for the 2.3 inline four cylinder EcoBoost, but there is an increase in clearance, 9.3 inches, opposed to the 8.4 inches that was on the prior gen. So it does feel like it sits up a lot higher, which I like that. The drive is also, it's been retuned. So it should be a little bit more smooth, but because you're a little bit more high, you may feel some of the imperfections because of the wheels. And let's see that performance. Gets up to speed fine. The suspension does feel a little bit more smooth than the prior gen. The seat cushion is good. The visibility is great. Now, one thing that is a little irritating is because this is a 24 model, a lot of variants are going 5G, but we're still at 4G capabilities. I do like the screen configuration. It's not necessarily over the top because it encases the climate control more or less there, but then when you have the actual buttons underneath it, it's a little bit of an overkill. It's gonna take me just some pros and cons. The pros have to start off with the refresh. You're getting a lot more technology. You're getting a lot more safety. It is going to be more tier driven, but you can still option features. It is the best in class for payload. They didn't increase anything for towing capacity, but increasing the clearance does make the ride feel more like 
just a smaller F-150 for a pretty decent price unless you go into the Lariat, which will bring me into some cons. If you want leather, you got to go that route. Standard is six speakers. You want the 10 speaker B&O? You got to go up the tier. Now, again, some features can be optioned when you get onto the XLT, but if you go into the XL, it's a basic truck, which I would recommend it's a few grand more when you go into the XLT and you can unlock the 2.7 liter V6 twin turbo, which makes it a little bit more potent underneath the hood. As for brakes on the vehicle, just like the prior, I mean, this thing will slide and stop on a dime. Turn radius at a stop point. It's going to receive about two lanes and let's rock and roll. One major difference between Ford, Toyota, and Chevy is Ford is going to be a little bit more quiet in the cabin, even when you're mashing on the gas pedal. When you go into the new Tacoma, it's a great vehicle. You need to go into at least the SR5 in order to really feel some power into it because the SR is gonna be a little too basic. But then when you're thinking about the price point, you're so close to this and yet this is going to outperform it with your day in and day out use. Plus the back seat is going to have a little bit more space than the Tacoma. It's almost two inches more in wheelbase, but it's 0.2 inches less in length. It is wider than the prior gen, but the steering does feel pretty light. I would say the Nissan Frontier is going to be the heaviest, but the big problem that I have, just like I was saying on the exterior, you can get an F-150 for less than this. The refresh is great, but it's not really increasing in technology. It's still 4G capabilities. Yeah, it's a little wider. It's a little bit longer in wheelbase, but then we're not getting any increase in towing, in payload, plus the suspension. It is smoother, don't get me wrong, but it does feel like it hops here and there, especially if you're going over railroad tracks or any imperfections, you'll feel it in the rear. And going against the Nissan Frontier, this is gonna have more payload, towing, more space in the back seat for leg room, more charging ports. The front, they have increased about two inches for leg room. So when you're thinking as a whole, this is definitely a great value. It's more or less a F-150 transformed into a Ranger. So it's a little bit more grown up, but let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Furman Ford for giving us this 2024 Ford Ranger XLT for our car review.